Included with your videotape is a course index. This contains reference numbers which will allow you to quickly access sections and topics with ease. In order to use this, you should reset the counter on your VCR to zero now. If you depend on computers and software, Via Graphics is the right choice for you. When you use video training, you learn faster, retain more, and perform better at your computer. And best of all, less time at your computer means more time for you and the things that are really important. This videotape is designed to help you learn your software quickly and efficiently. Follow these three easy steps to get the most from this tape. First, watch the entire video all the way through. Second, watch the tape again, this time in two to ten minute sections. Be sure to take your time to stop and practice the exercises or concepts on this video. To help you with this, we have inserted pauses into the tape. When you see this screen and hear this music, this is a suggested spot for you to stop or pause the tape. We recommend that you practice your computer skills at the pause points. Finally, rewind and refer back to the tape. You can do this as often as you need to. The video is divided into chapters, so you can easily find the areas where you need to review. You may continue this process until you master the concepts. Most Via Graphics training tapes also include a learning disk. You may use the sample data files on this disk to build your confidence by practicing on your own computer what you've learned from the video. The disk files are designed to work with software applications and will not run by themselves. Via Graphics offers the most comprehensive collection of computer video training tapes available from beginning to advanced levels. Please let us know how these videos work for you. Your comments are welcome and do make a difference. Let video training make the difference for you. Thank you for choosing a Via Graphics training video. Now more than ever. Keeping up with the world means keeping up with computer technology and software. Via Graphics, the leader in video training services, is proud to present this video tutorial. Hello and welcome to this video tutorial, Learning OS2 Warp Advanced. I'm Virgil Ritchie along with Leslie Thomas. IBM's OS2 Warp is an exciting 32-bit multitasking environment. Because you can run different types of programs and only need 4 megabytes of RAM, Warp is ideal for desktop or laptop computers alike. With its easy-to-understand graphical interface, Warp allows new or experienced computer operators to quickly perform basic and advanced operations. In this video, we'll cover changing the font and font size and using the mixed color palette. We'll change a window's background color. We'll create a color palette, then use the scheme palette. We'll explain the system clock, then define the spooler. We'll discuss keyboard and mouse settings. We'll show how you can make utility disks, then create a printer object and install a printer driver. We'll use the startup folder and prevent automatic startup. We'll remove a program from the startup window and discuss customizing OS2 configurations. We'll install IBM Works and Personal Information Manager. We'll create and save a document, then print it. We'll create a database and a report, then explain the template folder. We'll customize some PIM preferences. We'll install Hyper Access Lite, then display the phone book. We'll call a BBS. We'll add an entry to the phone book. Finally, We'll discuss FaxWorks for OS2. Since OS2 Warp uses a graphical environment, we will use the mouse and its left button, mouse button 1, unless otherwise specified. When we use the second or right mouse button, we will tell you it is mouse button 2. We assume you understand the fundamentals of OS2 Warp. 
If you want to review, refer to the tutorial, Getting Started with OS2 Warp. Let's copy the files on the learning disk. We begin at the OS2 Warp desktop. First, let's create a folder. We open the template folder. We place the pointer on the folder icon, then press and hold mouse button 2. We drag the mouse to above the templates folder and release the mouse. We close the templates window. Let's rename our folder. We place the pointer on the text. We press and hold the Alt key, then click. We release the Alt key. We type Tutor and press the spacebar. To deselect the text, we point and click in a blank area. Let's place our files into the folder. First, we open it. Next, we place the learning disk in the proper drive. Ours is A. We select the drive button on the launch pad. At the drive A window, we press and hold the control key. We select each object's text. When we see all of our objects highlighted, we release the mouse, then the control key. To move our objects to the tutor folder, we place the pointer on any object. We press and hold mouse button 2. Now we drag the mouse and the objects to the tutor folder. We release the mouse and Warp copies our files into the folder. We close the Drive A folder. Let's enlarge the Tutor window by dragging the border. When you're comfortable with Warp's basic operations, you may want to customize some of its features. Let's change the font and font size in our tutor window. We open the OS2 system folder. Then start system setup. We open the font palette and see some predefined fonts and font sizes. Warp offers 13 core fonts that are Adobe Type 1 fonts. When we installed Warp, these core fonts were automatically installed unless we indicated differently. The number 18 times Roman italic is a nice font, but it's too large. Let's edit it before we use it. We place the selection box on this font by pointing and clicking. Now we choose the Edit Font button. We can choose from four different styles for the Roman font. Let's use the default style times Roman bold italic. To change the font size, we click on the down arrow to the right of the size line. Warp offers six different font sizes. We select 10. We see the new size in the sample preview box. If you have fonts on a floppy disk you want to add to your desktop, choose the Add button. We select Cancel and return to the Edit Font box. To remove a font from your system, simply choose the Delete button. You can highlight any font in the Font Files list, then select the Delete button. To close the box, we choose Cancel. If you want to outline, underscore, or strike out your text, click the box in front of the desired option. Choosing the Undo button changes the font back to its default settings. We're finished with editing the font, so we close the Edit Font window. Let's place our edited font into the Tutor folder window. We place the mouse pointer anywhere on the text. We press and hold mouse button 2. The pointer changes into a pencil. We drag the mouse to the Tutor window, then release. We close the Font Palette window. 
and move the tutor folder to the bottom of the desktop. Let's open the mixed color palette. We can change the background color of any window from here. Let's change the background color of the tutor window from white to bright yellow. We place the pointer on the bright yellow swatch. We press and hold mouse button 2. Now we drag the mouse and the paint bucket symbol to a blank area of the tutor window. We release the mouse and see the change. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. To change all of the window background colors at once, simply press and hold the Alt key as you drag the color from the palette to any window. We can use the same technique to change the desktop background also. Let's change it to bright green. We place the pointer on the proper swatch in the palette window. Now we press and hold mouse button 2, then drag the mouse to a blank desktop area. We release the mouse. We can easily change object or window title text. Let's change the tutor window title text to red. First, we activate the tutor window. We place the pointer on the red swatch. We press and hold the control key, then press mouse button 2. We drag the mouse to the tutor folder title text. We release the mouse, then the control key. To change the desktop object's title text, we again select the swatch, then press the control key. We press mouse button 2, then drag the mouse to any object's text. We release the mouse, then the control key. Let's change the tutor's title bar color to light green. We select the proper swatch. We press mouse button 2, then drag the mouse to the title bar. We release the mouse. We activate and move the mixed color palette. To customize a swatch in the palette, just select a swatch, then choose the Edit Color button. If you're working on a project that uses specific shades, such as company colors, you can create your own palette. We display the mixed color palette pop-up menu. OS2 Warp offers two kinds of arrows in a pop-up menu. Any button-like arrow displays a list with the default item checkmarked. We select it and see the Help menu options. We press the Escape key and close it. Choosing the flat right arrow opens another menu. We select the Windows right arrow. From this menu we can make a selection. Again, we press Escape and close the menu. To create a palette, we select the right arrow next to Create Another. We accept the check-marked Default Palette. We click Default and see the System Setup Create Notebook window. We want to place our custom palette on the desktop, so highlight Desktop. We choose the Create button and OS2 Warp creates a color palette for us. We close the Mixed Color Palette window. Warp places our palette object in the upper right corner of the desktop. Let's change the palette's name and use a keyboard shortcut. We select the Color Palette object. With the Color Palette object selected, we press and hold the Shift key, then press F9. We release the Shift key. With the insertion point blinking in the text line, we press the delete key and remove the default text. We type tutorial. We press enter. We type palette. To deselect the text, we point and click in a blank area. We open the tutorial palette and see the default colors. We close the palette. At the System Setup window, we open the Solid Color Palette. We use this palette the same way as the Mixed Color Palette. Let's close this window. 
we open the scheme palette. We can use one of 28 predefined color schemes. Each scheme offers a preset color for the desktop, object titles, and different parts of the window. In addition, we can customize any scheme. We select the default scheme. We double click it and see the edit scheme box. To see the window and screen parts we can change, we display the window area menu. We choose 3D highlight bright and close the menu. Use the border width section to change the vertical and horizontal window borders. Keep in mind the wider your borders, the more screen space they use. You can use the transparent color and visible text options if you edit the desktop icon text background or the folder icon text background. Choosing the transparent color option allows you to see the icon text in a folder or on the desktop. If you do not want to view the icon text in a folder or on the desktop, remove the check mark in front of the visible text option. We do not want to edit the scheme, so we close this window. First, let's change our tutor folder window, then the system. We place the pointer on the default icon. We press and hold mouse button 2. We drag the mouse and the icon to the tutor window and release the mouse. To change the system, we again place the pointer on the default icon. We press and hold the Alt key, then mouse button 2. We drag the mouse and the object to an empty desktop spot. We release the mouse, then the Alt key. We close the scheme palette window. Warp restored our window background font and font size, title bar and text colors to the default scheme. We close the tutor folder window. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. We use the system clock object to set our system time and date. We can set an alarm also. Let's take a look at the system clock. We open the system clock and see a default analog clock. Let's display our time in digital. We'll display the system clock pop-up menu with the keyboard shortcut. We press F10 and see the pop-up menu. We select Settings. At the System Clock Settings Notebook, we confirm the Date Time tab is selected. We use the up and down spin arrows to adjust parts of the date and time. We move to the next page, View, by clicking the down arrow in the lower right corner. Let's display both the date and time in a digital mode. In the information section, we choose the circle in front of this option. In the mode section, we select the circle in front of digital. To see the change, we move the settings notebook. We move to view second page by clicking the right arrow in the lower right corner. To change the color of the background, hour marks, face or hour and minute hands, simply choose the circle in front of the proper option, then select the change color button. Let's change the background color. With this option selected, we select the change color button. At the edit color window, we place the pointer on the line's intersection. We drag the mouse down and to the right. As we drag, we see the clock's background color automatically change. When we see a bright yellow color background, we release the mouse. We're finished, so we close this window and return to the System Clock Settings Notebook. To change the date or time's text font, click the proper circle, then select the Change Font button. You can choose one of 11 font types and sizes. Let's move to the alarm page by selecting the right arrow at the bottom of the page. We select the circle in front of the alarm on option and warp activates the audio alarm and the message box features. Use the time and date sections to set your alarm. We choose the circle in front of alarm off. We move to the general page. Let's change the system clock title bar text. With the insertion point blinking in the title line, 
we type via graphics. We are finished with the settings notebook, so we close it. We see the new title bar text. We can easily enlarge or decrease the clock window and warp automatically adjust the text size. We place the pointer on the lower right corner. When we see a two-headed arrow, we drag the mouse up and to the left. When properly sized, we release the mouse. We close the clock window. If we perform large amounts of printing, the spooler stores jobs that are waiting for an available printer or port. Let's take a look at the spooler settings. We open the spooler. When you print, Warp stores your print jobs in the spool directory. If you have large print jobs or need a separate storage area, change the spool path here. We click the Print Priority tab. We simply drag the Print Priority slider arm to adjust the print job speed. In the value line, 1 is the lowest priority, with 189 the highest. Keep in mind, if we set a high priority for our print jobs, our system may run slower. We move to the next page. You can change the spooler program object title to the whole page, create another, or edit the icon also. If you want to use another system or floppy disk, choose the Find Push button. By default, Warp enables the and anyone can view jobs in a printer. If we have a high school, we can disable and send our print job directly to the printer. We display the pop-up menu by pressing F. Disable spooler. Okay, the disabled prompt. To enable the display the pop-up menu, pressing F10. We choose and answer OK. We close the spooler. Customize the repeat rate and repeat rate keyboard. Have a look at these and other keyboard settings. We open the keyboard. With the time tab selected, we see available options. The repeat rate slider arm bar can hold down keys function. At the time when a key is first pressed, text effect, drag the repeat delay rate arm. To test the new setting, place the insertion point in the test key line, then press and hold any key. Select the mappings tab. Use the F10 key to display pop-up menu. Also, we use the Shift plus F9 key and title text. You can change these default mapping keys here. We select the Special Needs tab. Use these settings to customize your keyboard. To activate, just select the circle in front of On. For example, you can adjust how long you can hold down a key before Warp accepts it as a keystroke. We select the General tab. You can specify another title and alter the icon. We close the keyboard window. OS2 Warp allows us to easily customize every mouse feature. Let's take a look at the mouse. We open the mouse object. Adjust the double click rate or the tracking speed. We select the setup tab. To reverse your mouse button functions, Choose the left-handed picture. We choose the Mappings tab. Select which button and key you want to use for dragging an object, displaying the window list and pop-up menus, or editing title text. We choose the Pointers tab. You can edit any default system pointer. We select the Load Set Push button and see three other default sets we can load and use. We choose Cancel and return to the Settings Notebook. We select the Comet Cursor tab. If you are using a laptop, you can have a hard time seeing the cursor. 
Activating the Comet cursor creates a trail that follows your mouse pointer. Remember, if you turn the Comet cursor on, you must restart OS2 Warp before the changes take effect. We select the General tab. Again, you can change the title or the current icon here. We close the Mouse Settings Notebook. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. If OS2 Warp came pre-installed on your system, you can make a backup of Warp with the utility disks. Also, use the utility disks to start OS2 Warp from diskettes. Check your hard drive for errors or problems, backup and restore OS2 directories and files. We open Utility Disks. To create your utility disks, have three high-density, three-and-a-half-inch floppies available. OS2 Warp automatically formats your diskettes as it writes to them. Use the spinner arrows to change the drive letter. We choose Cancel and close the window. The Device Driver Install object allows you to place the drivers for devices such as CD-ROMs or a mouse onto your hard drive. Use Device Driver Install for all drivers except printers and plotters. When we installed OS2 Warp, we did not specify a printer. Let's create a printer object and install a printer driver now. If you want to install a new or additional printer or plotter driver, please try these exercises with us. We close the system setup and OS2 system windows. First, let's create the printer object. We open the templates window. We place the pointer on the printer template. We press and hold mouse button 2. Now we drag the mouse to the desktop. We release the mouse and see the printer object. Warp automatically opens the create a printer window. Let's change the title text. With the insertion point blinking in the name line, we press the backspace key and clear the text. We type via graphics printer. We accept the rest of the defaults. We select the install new printer driver button. OS2 Warp supports most popular printers. If our printer is not listed, Choose the circle in front of the Other OS2 Printer Driver option. Then place the OS2 installation diskette containing the printer drivers in the proper drive and select the Refresh Push button. Let's install a Hewlett Packard Desktop 520 printer. We scroll the printer driver list until we see our drive. We highlight the driver. We choose Install. We insert the OS2 Warp installation CD-ROM into the drive. We accept the default path and choose OK. Warp copies the printer driver onto our hard drive. At the successfully installed prompt, we select OK. At the Create a Printer window, we choose the Create button and Warp links our printer driver to our printer object. We close the template window. To see any current print jobs, we open the Via Graphics Printer by double-clicking it. We close the window. To change various settings, we display the Via Graphics Printer pop-up menu, then choose Settings. Change the printer's name from the View tab. We select the Printer Driver tab. We change our default printer driver here. Use the Output, Q options, and Print options to further customize your settings. We close the printer window. Many manufacturers supply printer drivers with their printers. Warp makes it easy to install this driver for our Win OS2 sessions. Let's install a Hewlett Packard provided printer driver. We place the manufacturer's disk in the proper drive. Ours is A. We open OS2 System, then open Command Prompts. We open the Win OS2 window.
We open the main group window, then open the control panel. In the control panel group window, we open printers. At the printers window, we select the add button and see the list of printers. With install unlisted or updated printer highlighted, we select the install button. At the install driver window, we choose OK. At the add unlisted or updated printer window, we highlight HP DeskJet 520 printer. We choose OK and Windows installs our printer driver. When finished, we see our printer highlighted in the installed printers list. When we see the new driver in the installed printers, we confirm it's highlighted. Now we choose the Set as Default Printer button. We're finished, so we select the Close button. We close the control panel and the main group windows. We close the Windows Program Manager and close the Command Prompts and OS2 System windows. You may pause the tape now. Let's review what we covered in Chapter 1. We changed the font and font size in a window. We used the mixed color palette and changed a window's background color and title text. We used a pop-up menu and created a palette object. We discussed the solid color palette, then used the scheme palette. We explained OS2 warp system clock. We disabled the spooler, then enabled it. We discussed OS2 warp's utility disks and device driver install objects. We created a printer object, then installed an OS2 warp printer driver. Finally, we installed a manufacturer's printer driver for Win OS2 sessions. If we frequently use a particular program, we can automatically open it every time we start Warp. Let's have a look at the startup folder. We open OS2 System, then open Startup. We want to automatically start OS2 Chess every time we begin Warp. We open the Games folder. We close the OS2 System window. Then place the pointer on the OS2 Chess. We press and hold the Control plus Shift keys, then press and hold Mouse button 2. We drag the mouse and the object copy to the startup window. When properly positioned, we release the mouse, then the Control and Shift keys. We see a shadow of OS2 Chess in the startup window. We close all windows. Let's try startup. We choose the shutdown button on the launch pad. We answer OK, then yes at the prompt. At the shutdown has completed message, we press and hold the control and alt key, then press delete. We release the control and alt keys and OS2 warp restarts. Warp automatically opens OS2 Chess, and we see the Set Players box. We choose Cancel and close it, then close the Chess window. We can prevent a program or programs located in the Startup folder from starting. Let's restart Warp, then prevent OS2 Chess from starting. We shut down OS2 Warp. We answer OK and Yes at the prompts. We restart Warp. When we see the OS2 Warp logo, we press and hold Control plus Shift plus F1. We hold these keys for about 15 seconds or until we see the desktop. Then we release the keys. Let's remove the chess program from the startup folder. We open OS2 system. Then open the startup folder. We place the pointer on the OS2 chess object. 
we press and hold mouse button 2. We drag the mouse to the shredder object on the launch pad. We release the mouse and see the delete objects box. We select the delete button and answer yes to the prompt. Warp deletes the OS2 chest shadow. Let's close the startup window. If other people use our system, we can restrict them from operating portions of our desktop. Let's have a look at some of the options. At the OS2 system window, we open productivity. We open the OS2 system editor. We select file, then open. We display the files in the C colon root directory. In the file list, we double click config.sys. If you remove any of these options in the set auto start line, you will not be able to use it. For example, eliminating the task list option prevents anyone from opening the window list. We close the OS2 system editor and the productivity windows. Earlier we deleted an object and Warp displayed a delete confirmation. For convenience we can customize the confirmations displayed by Warp. At the OS2 system window we open System Startup, then System. We choose the Confirmations tab. By default, Warp confirms a folder and object delete. Also, Warp confirms when you change or remove a file extension during any file renaming. If you want to display a confirm when you copy, move, or create a shadow, choose the box in front of this option. By default, Warp displays a window with the pause push button in it when you copy, move, or create a shadow. We close the system's notebook, then the system setup window. You may pause the tape now. Let's review what we've covered in Chapter 2. We placed a shadow object into the startup folder. We prevented the automatic startup, then deleted the shadow object. We discussed customizing startup using the config.sys file. Finally, we explained the confirmations displayed by Warp. OS2 Warp includes IBM Works and PIM, Personal Information Manager, in the bonus pack. This group of applications and productivity tools uses all of OS2's advantages. This includes the 32-bit code, multi-threading, and controls. You can also use drag-and-drop interaction between the applications. The PIM is part of IBM Works. When we install Works, we install it also. We're installing from a CD-ROM disk. If you're installing with diskettes, some commands may be different. Refer to the bonus pack booklet for details. We place the bonus pack CD-ROM into the drive. We select the OS2 system window button on the launch pad. We type D colon, the letter of our CD-ROM drive. Then press enter. Let's change to the directory containing the installation program for the United States. We type CD backslash US. We press enter. At the D colon backslash US prompt, we type install. Then press enter. We see the bonus pack installation utility for OS2 window. We highlight IBM Works. Then choose the install button. The instructions window reminds us we need to reboot our system when installation is complete. We select the continue button and Warp installs IBM Works. We drag the box up for a better view.
We select Exit and return to the Installation Utility window. We don't want to install any more bonus pack applications now, so we select Cancel and return to the OS2 window. We close the OS2 system windows. and answer yes to the prompt. This program updated the config.sys file so we must shut down then restart OS2 warp. Let's do that now. We open the IBM Works program. We can use this application dialog box to create or open one of the five IBM Works applications. Let's set some preferences for the word processor application. With it highlighted, we choose the Preferences button. With the Measure tab selected, we can set the measurement, appearance, and century format for our default document. We select the circle in front of four digit. We choose the Dictionary tab. If you have created a custom dictionary and want to use it as a default, Click the folders until you display your dictionary in the path line. We can create a custom dictionary inside a word processor document. We'll explain how in a moment. We choose the document tab. We want to save any word processor document we create in our tutor folder. To change the path, we scroll the folder list up, then double click the C folder to open it. We open the desktop folder. We scroll the list until we see Tutor FO. We open this folder and see the new path. We move to the macro page. A macro is a series of recorded keystrokes. You create and save macros inside the word processor document. By default, Warp stores the created macro in the C colon backslash IBM Works directory. If you want to change this directory path, use the same method we used earlier on the document page. We close the Preferences Notebook, and Warp automatically saves our changes. We can use the templates in the Works window to create a new document also. These templates work the same way as the templates in the Desktop Template folder. Think of each template as a notepad. Then you peel off a template, a pattern of a new document, when you need it. Let's create a document. With Word Processor selected, we choose the New button and see the document window. We maximize the window. With the insertion point blinking in the upper left corner, we type, using IBM Works Word Processor is easy. We deliberately misspelled easy. To center our text, we choose the Center Justification button on the ribbon. It's the 11th from the right. Let's change the IBM Works text into bold type. We place the insertion point to the left of the I of IBM. We drag the mouse to the right and highlight the text. We release the mouse. We select the bold button on the ribbon. It has a capital B on it. Let's change the font size. With the text still highlighted, we display the font size drop-down list. We select 12. To deselect the text, we point and click in a blank area. Let's spell check our document and use a keyboard shortcut. We press F7 and see the spell dialog box. To create a custom dictionary, we choose the options button. We choose the document button and see the proof box. In the list of replacement words, we highlight easy. We select the replace button and Warp corrects the misspelled word. Let's save the document and use a keyboard shortcut. We press Control plus S and we see our new path displayed. At the file name line, we type via SAMP. We press Enter and Warp saves our document. We close the document and open the Tutor folder and see our new document. 
It's easy to print our document. We place our pointer on the via SAMP object. We press and hold mouse button 2, then drag the mouse to the printer object. We release the mouse. You may pause the tape now. Use this method to print any OS2 warp object. In the tutor folder, we will find a word processor object, VIA1, created with the works word processor. If we do not want to create a document, we can open the VIA1 document and try the spell check and bold exercises. IBM Works database application lets us perform tasks usually found in large and expensive database applications. For example, once we enter our information, we can sort, search, design a custom screen, print labels, and calculate fields. If we use a database with the DBase extension, we can open and manipulate these tables with our Works database. Also, Works database supports CSV and TSV files. Let's create a small database and we'll use a Works database template. We place the pointer on the database template, then press and hold mouse button 2. We drag the mouse and the object to the tutor folder. Release the mouse, then open the database object. With the Create New Database option selected, we choose OK and see the Insert Field box. Let's create a customer list. The field name line is where we type the category label, not the information. We can create a field up to 10 characters. In the field name line, we type capital last underscore name. Warp does not allow spaces in any field. We can choose one of six specific fields with text as the default. We change the field width to 15 by clicking on the up arrow spin button. We accept the rest of the defaults. We choose the save button and see the database window. Our pointer changes into a symbol. We want the first field in the upper left corner, so we position the pointer. We click and see the field label and field. Let's insert another field. We select data, then insert field. At the insert field line, we type initial. We change the field width to 2. We select save. At the database window, we place the initial field under the last name field by pointing and clicking. Let's adjust this field. We place the pointer in the field center. We drag the mouse and move the field label and name. When properly positioned, we release the mouse. We're finished creating fields, so let's enter some information. We choose the data button on the ribbon. It's the first one from the right. We answer yes at the save prompt. Let's enter our data. With the insertion point blinking in the last name line, we type Wallach. We press tab and move to the initial field. We type C period. To add another record, we press F2. We type Smith. We press tab and type J period. Then we select the Accept button. We're finished. Let's save the database. We choose File, then Save As. With the path at C colon backslash desktop tutor, we type via data at the file name line and press Enter. At the Use Existing Database prompt, we press Enter and return to the database window. We select the Cancel button and see the Record Navigation Controls. To view the second record, we select the Next Record button on the ribbon. It has a right arrow on it. Choosing the right arrow with the line in front of it displays the last record. We move to the previous record by selecting the previous record button. It has a left arrow on it. 
If you have several records, you can display the first record by selecting the left arrow with the line in front of it. You can easily make any changes or add fields. We select the Form button on the ribbon and see our fields and a new menu bar. We move to the data view by choosing the first button on the right. We close the database window. We move the tutor window and we see our original database object and our VIA data object. We open our database by double clicking the VIA data object. Then we close the VIA data window. When we have created a database, we can create a report. Let's try it. We have rearranged the tutor window. First, we create a report object. We place the pointer on the report template object. We press and hold mouse button 2. Then drag the mouse to the tutor folder. We release the mouse and see the report object. We open the report. We want to use our new database. We double-click database.ldb and we see our fields in the report design screen. Let's move all of our fields into the report columns list. We select the double right arrow button. We accept the rest of the defaults and choose the view button. It's the first one from the right. We see both of our records. Let's save the report. We choose File, then Save As. With the C colon backslash desktop backslash tutor path displayed, we type via RPT in the file name line. We press Enter and return to the report window. We close the window. We see our report and our original report object in the tutor folder. We can use the sheet template to create a spreadsheet. Then we can use our spreadsheet figures to create a chart. We can create two and three dimensional charts, including bars, stacked bars, pies, and line charts. Add titles and legends to our chart, then drag and drop any IBM Works chart into a word processing document. The Works template has different personal and business patterns we can use. Let's take a look at the template folder. We open the template folder and we see nine different template patterns. We used a memo template to create a document in the tutor folder. Let's open it. We activate the tutor window by clicking its title bar. We open via memo and enlarge the window. We see a logo and the necessary company information. The works template predefined the company data by listing company name, address, and so forth. We created the logo by using the tools in the object menu. By default, the memo template placed the date this memo was created in the date line. We closed the VIA memo window. We activate the template window, then close it. We close the tutor folder. The personal information manager has an appointment book, a phone address book, a monthly planner, and a to-do list. Use the notepad to hold text or graphic information. Remember, we can drag and drop any data from a works object into a notepad page. We can display a yearly calendar also. Let's take a look at some of the components of the Personal Information Manager. Let's view the year calendar. We double click it and see all of the months in the 1995 year. Today's date has a red outline around it. We close the calendar. Let's open PIM Preferences. We can color customize any holiday. We move to the phone book page. Use the first page to set your modem parameters so you can use the built-in dialer. 
Just set your parameters, then choose the box in front of Enable Modem. Then, Warp enables the options used when you make a call using the phone book or contact list. We move to the second page of the phone book by selecting the right arrow in the lower right corner. You can create labels for the 10 entry fields in the custom pages in the phone book. In the user label 1 line, we type spouse. Use the check labels to create labels for the check boxes in the custom page in the phone book. We move to page 3 and see other user label and check labels you can use. We move to page 4. By default, the phone address book displays three columns, name, company, and phone. Let's add another column. We display the drop-down menu in the column 1 line. We highlight user field 1. This is the field we typed spouse in earlier. You can define custom page tabs also. If you want to quickly move to the page with the custom tab, you can create a hotkey by placing a tilde symbol before the defined letter. Warp will underline the hotkey character. We move to the appointments page. You can set your individual preferences for the appointment application. These include work day times, appointment durations, lead time, and alarm snooze time. We move to the general page. This page contains options that affect all of the PIM applications. If you do not want an overdue event reminder to appear when you open Works, remove the check mark in front of this option. The Event Monitor is a hidden manager of any alarms and program launches. You cannot make any changes to this application. You can only turn it off or on from here. By default, Warp Auto loads the Event Monitor. We're finished, so we close the Preferences Notebook. Because we made changes, we need to close and restart IBM Works for the changes to take effect. We choose OK, then close the IBM Works window. We open IBM Works. Let's open the Phone Address Book and see our new column. We close the phone book. As we mentioned earlier, you cannot make any changes to the event monitor application. We open the planner. We use the planner's grid format to track appointment dates and times. We close the planner. Then close the IBM Works window. Let's review what we've covered in Chapter 3. We installed IBM Works and the Personal Information Manager. We opened and explained the IBM Works application box, then set some preferences. We created and saved a word processor document. We discussed how to print any object. We created a database, then saved it. We created a report and used our database's information. We discussed the Works template folder. We opened the phone address book, then explained the event monitor. Finally, we viewed the planner. HyperAccess Lite, the entry version of HyperAccess for OS2, is a 32-bit, easy-to-understand, graphical-oriented modem program. We can transfer our files using Z modem, Y modem, X modem, or Kermit protocols. HyperAccess Lite also offers ANSI, VT52, or VT100 terminal emulation. Let's install HyperAccess Lite. We open the OS2 command window from the launch pad. With the bonus pack CD-ROM in the drive, we type D colon and press enter. Next, we type CD backslash US. We press enter. We type install. We highlight HyperAccess Lite for OS2. 
Then choose the Install button. We accept the default directory and select Install. At the Successfully Installed prompt, we choose OK. We close the utility window by choosing Cancel and see our IBM Information Superhighway window. We close the OS2 window and answer yes to the prompt. We open Hyper Access Light and see a phone book. Let's call the Hellgraves BBS the maker of Hyper Access Light. We double click the icon. We see a message saying we need to define communication settings. We choose OK and see the communication settings window. We are using a 2400 baud Hayes compatible modem. We display the drop down menu. With Hayes compatible 2400 selected, we click the down arrow. Hyper Access Lite supports most popular modems. If your modem isn't listed, refer to your modem user's manual for compatible substitutes. Hyper Access Lite has a ComSense feature that automatically sets your parity, data bits, and stop bits. If necessary, use the custom port and modem setup buttons to fine-tune your modem configuration. We have to dial 9 before we can use an outside line, so we type 9 comma in front of the phone number. We're finished, so we choose OK. Hyper Access Lite automatically dials our number and connects us. We hang up by selecting the Disconnect from Host button. It is the second from the left. Let's open the phone book. For a thumbnail description of any toolbar button, we place the pointer on the button. We open the phone book by pressing the proper button. At this time, we see all of the entries in the phone book. Let's display them by their proper tab letters. We display the phone book pop-up menu. We choose Show Tab Letter Only. Let's add a new entry to the phone book. We choose File from the menu bar, then the New command. At the system name line, we type American Small Business Computers. For an icon, we select the computer. We choose OK and see the Properties Notebook. Let's enter the phone number. We type 9, 825-4878. We choose the Terminal Settings tab. We display the drop-down list. We choose ANSI. We accept the rest of the settings. To see our new entry, we close then reopen Hyper Access Lite. At the Save Connection prompt, we answer Yes. At the Save As box, we accept the American.HAL default file name and choose OK. We reopen Hyper Access Lite and see our new listing. Let's call it. We double click the American icon and Hyper Access Lite calls the American Small Business Bulletin Board. To hang up, we choose the Disconnect from Host button. We close the Hyper Access Lite window. If we have a fax modem, Faxworks for OS2 is in the bonus pack. With Faxworks, we can send and receive faxes of unlimited length. Also, you can print faxes to any OS2 printer. Faxworks for OS2 supports fax modems that follow the Class 1 class 2, and send fax standards. If your fax modem isn't supported, 
The full retail version of FaxWorks includes support for additional fax hardware. Let's shut down OS2 Warp. We close the IBM Information Superhighway window. We select the shutdown button and answer OK to the prompt. We answer yes to the next prompt. When the shutdown has completed message appears, we turn the computer off. Let's review what we've covered in Chapter 4. We installed HyperAccess Lite, then defined our modem parameters. We called Hillgreaves BBS. We changed the phone book display, then added an entry. We saved the entry, then called it. Finally, we discussed FaxWorks for OS2, then shut down Warp. That review concludes this video tutorial, Learning OS2 Warp Advanced. We've covered a lot of information in this tutorial. If you feel the need to review, simply rewind the tape and watch that section again until you are comfortable with the material. We at Via Graphics would like to thank you for choosing our company for your computer training needs. Remember, if you plan to learn OS2 Warp or any computer software, there is no better way than through video training with Via Graphics.